So I am always the optimist. Um, <laughs> we've been through this drill yesterday, and I think we learned our way around this. Uh, um, we have also created, the staff have created some wonderful slides that will put the summary data up on each point. Um, the, the drill now, as you know, is what we did yesterday. We have a series of very specific questions, which are basically the wording as the draft report has it for each of the uh, findings. Uh, our responsibility now, our duty now, is to go through and uh, review that specific wording. Uh, we can have brief discussions about uh, what might or might not be changed in that, but we will have then have a, a vote and people can vote uh, as they choose, of course, and there, it, once we've come to the point of the vote, Microphone. it's on. Closer. Closer, sorry, okay. Oh, okay, thank you. So we, we will uh, take the questions as we did yesterday. Uh, we will have a pr brief presentation of a summary of the data, again, that supports uh, in the eyes of the NTP and in the language in the draft. Uh, the decisions that have been made pre preliminarily as to the categorization of carcinogenesis for each of the outcomes. Uh, we'll go through these. What I would like to do is for people to reflect on the extensive discussions that we've already had and that there's no need to revisit all of those points. Uh, you've got that on your mind and when you vote and if, if you end up voting nay, you then have the opportunity to state the basis for that and we move on to the next question. So. Um, if we could, yeah, if, if, uh, if we could have the first slide up with the first uh, uh, question. So, um, yes. So, doc, Dr. Wide, do you want to, do you want to just very briefly remind people of, of the outcome and for this specific report? So, this first First point is male sprague dolly rats exposed to GSM modulation at 900 megahertz, and it's some evidence of carcinogenicity, the incidence of malignant schwannoma of the heart. Right. Uh, so for this lesion, you know, uh, for this lesion, our justification or our, our rationalization for the conclusion of some evidence was the fact that there was an increase uh, in the positive trend across the exposure groups, uh, as indicated by the asterisk by the zero on the control. Uh, the Incidence uh, of zero in the control compared to the occurrence of this lesion in all of the exposed uh, groups, uh, as well as the incidence at the top dose group, although it wasn't pairwise significant, uh, this exceeded the historical control range of zero to two percent. Thank you. Uh, partic particular vote, uh, note that what we will be voting on is the inclusion of malignant schwannoma in the heart for some evidence of carcinogenic activity. There are other things on the outcome slide that are not uh, part of this vote. So just to remind people, that's there as, as additional background. So um, any discussion uh, prior to calling for a vote? Yes, Dr. Harkema. Could you just explain why I didn't raise to a higher degree? Uh, in this case, uh, it's uh, the level of the response uh, at 5% just uh, it exceeds the historical control rate, but it wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't statistically significant, as well as uh, we only saw it at that top dose group. We didn't see a, a, an increasing dose response. And again, mostly it's, it's the, the level of the response. Uh, if we saw uh, a more robust response uh, that might have risen to the level of clear evidence. Yep, thanks. Other points of clarification? Dr. Felter. So one other thing that I, I think the group should take into consideration in the final determination is also the commonality of response across the, the other three <clears throat> test groups, the other males and, and both females. In all cases, there were malignant schwannomas in some of the treated animals and none in controls. So that's another consideration for me. Thank you. Any other uh, Dr. Adler? So just to clarify, um, Dr. Wide, if the number five had an asterisk next to it, then it would be clear evidence? 
No, that, that's not necessarily the case. As we see with the CDMA, that actually was the case. There was a six in that six watts per kilogram group. And again, this was, it wasn't just the necessarily the statistical significance, but just the level of the response. Uh, it didn't rise to the level that we would consider uh, clear evidence. So I'm trying to understand where, what the threshold for that would be, using just this, this as an example, not to debate it, but just to understand the line between some evidence and clear evidence. So the number five would have to be what? Six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, with a star next to it. Just can you help me understand that? Yeah, what it would uh, need to be. To, I, I'll just add a little bit to yeah. this. And so we we do look across reports and try to provide consistency in our calls. And we've had other chemicals that had uh, a stronger response in the, the double digits, and we provided that as a clear. And then we also there's another consideration is we felt that this clearly looked like it was uh, treatment related. Um, however, there's uh, across this and the other uh, endpoints, the, the survival we did that was a factor for us, saying we we did have a lower survival in the control males. And just to speak a little bit to that, we weren't sure if that was related to the RFR, but we're also seeing this in other studies. So it may be the variability of our rat that we're seeing a wide range in survival and uh, issues with the CPN. But if if I recall, uh, Dr. Wyde. Uh, for the schwannomas, the, the, they were early, relatively early occurring tumors. So you had made a statement, I think, to the effect that the, the, uh, er, the survival difference might not be as important for that tumor. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, and that, that data is actually in the, uh, the uh, partial findings report where we actually uh, list in one of the appendices the actual individual animal data and the time that that tumor was first observed. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, yeah, uh, this, for this case, uh, that was less of a concern than in other cases for, uh, because we actually did see these tumors earlier on in the study. Well, Dr. Clarification. Yeah. For clarification, what does a single star mean? You, you, you have it in two different places, especially when you have it on zero. What what do you uh, have in mind? So the screen there. Yeah, so the single star is, indicates a p-value of less than 0.05. The double star uh, indicates a p-value of less than 0.01. If you see this, the asterisk at the control group, that indicates a positive trend test. <laughs> So uh, and if one in the control is the trend test. The positive trend test. And if that appears in one of the exposure groups, that is a pairwise comparison. Dr. Wolf, did you have a comment? Or? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> if, is there any more discussion or clarification of the data on the basis for the NTP's uh, preliminary uh, classification of uh, malignant schwannoma in the heart as some evidence. Uh, if there is no other discussion, I would entertain a motion. Now, keep in mind that if people feel that it belongs in a different category, then they simply would vote no for this classification, and then we can go back. Uh, if it's voted down, then we can go back and and rework it. If If there's a majority vote in favor of the motion, uh, then people can indicate that voted no can indicate the basis for that change. But if, if it's voted down, then we can revisit uh, the, the, the category. And uh, a, 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 a new motion could be made with a different category. So I just want to make sure people kind of understand this process here. Is that, is that correct, Dr. Wolf? Yes, they can make a motion to, ex to accept as written. They can also make a motion at this point to suggest a change. Oh, so, so that, that would be an option if, if people wanted to make a motion, an alternative motion than what's on here, uh, th that would be fine. We don't have to vote this one down no. without, okay, thank you for that clarification. Yes, Dr. Felter. Are we ready to go ahead forward uh, then? Yes, please. Um, <clears throat> I would like to move that this be upgraded to clear evidence. So the motion is uh, to change some evidence to clear evidence for malignant schwannoma in the heart. Is there a second? I second that. Oh, Dr. Adam. Do we have? Okay. Yeah, just a minute. So we have a motion and a second. Let's uh, change the language here. So pr prior to the vote, is there any more discussion? Yeah, Dr. I Jones. just wanted to out that if you consider the GSM and CDMA together, if I, I, I want to make sure I'm correct here, the incidence would be 0, 4, 4, and 11. 
but by adding the two model, uh, we, we just that, that I don't want to interrupt too much, but that you got to remember your denominator changes. Yeah. yeah, of course. Any further discussion? So the motion has been seconded. I will call for a vote. All in favor of the motion to include Schwinoma in the heart as clear evidence of carcinogenic activity, raise their hands, please. I see seven yes. All opposed? Three opposed. Uh, those who opposed that vote, uh, uh, let's see, I think Dr. You, Mallard. Right, go, go ahead. <laughs> I just thought the, uh, the numbers presented weren't quite striking enough, especially with how many tests were run, and how many things were assayed. Um, to me, the issues with your control group also pushed me away from clear evidence. Those would be my main reasons. Thank you. Uh, doc Dr. Harkman. Actually, mine would be very similar to, to his, so I, I agree. Thank you. Dr. Klein. I, yeah, basically the same, the same reasoning. You know, I'm not saying that I, I don't think there's cause for concern, but rather that um, I, I'm more comfortable with the sum designation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We will, um, I'm sorry, let me ask for a point of clarification. We have uh, data for these other lesions, but these are, uh, these are non-neoplastic changes, so we address those later, correct? That's correct, and yeah. they were just here for clarification, clarification. additional information. Correct. Okay, right. I just wanted to let people know that, 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 that yeah, we haven't forgotten about those, that we but we were doing uh, uh, cancerous changes, carcinogenic. So, so for this category, uh, we are again looking at uh, males, um, and uh, this is incidence of adenoma carcinomas in the prostate. The category is equivocal evidence here. Um, Dr. Wyden? Uh, the rationale for equivocal here was that uh, the incidence at the 1.5 and 3 and 6 watts per kilogram were similar to controls. Uh, we did see an increase or an elevated uh, incidence at the 3 watts per kilogram exposure. Uh, this was not statistically significant, and it did exceed historical control rates. Uh, the historical control range was 0 to 2%. Uh, so all of the other, the control and the other two exposure uh, were close to the historical control range. Uh, but it was just the 3 watt per kilogram exposure that we saw uh, higher uh, than the uh, historical control and higher incidence compared to controls. Thank you. Questions for clarification? Yes, Dr. Jones. What was the historical control range without including these? Uh, since there were two here, if you look at the bottom, there were two out of 240. The two that are out of the 240 were in this uh, in this study. So, so the the historical controls include these. That that's correct. Okay, so so, so the historical the, control the, excluding them that would have been zero. Is zero. That correct? That's correct. Out of out of 150, the denominator then would change as well. Other questions of clarification? Dr. Lin? Yeah. We have discussed this a few times. I wonder how relevant it is to include the uh, current studies in the historical controls. It's not, in a way, it's a confusing the issue, isn't it? Uh, Dr. Booker, you want to comment on why, why that uh, was the choice of the NTP? So this is sort of a historical issue. Uh, usually we do a five-year window, and we're looking at a number of reports at any particular meeting, and we will prepare historical control tables before each meeting, and we will include all of the historical, or all of the control groups for that particular meeting <laughs> into a larger window. Unfortunately, here we have a small number of historical control studies so the, this particular study has an inordinate weight in this case. So no, isn't it more some senses this, it's, it's, it's double counting. In some senses, 
these historical or these control animals are the most appropriate. So they also add some validity to the, to this issue. Yeah, there are two aspects to this. Historical means in the past. Currently, uh, certainly, what we are uh, viewing right now is not in the past. It's at the present. That's number one. Yes. And uh, secondly, this uh, small number, regardless of the numbers, that's what it is. It's not because it is small, therefore you adjust it. So I think we, uh, that issue deserves some further consideration. Further, further discussion, Dr. Harkeman? Just point out, there's no statistical um, use. Uh, there is no statistical significance here, right? Okay. That's correct. There are no. That's correct. There's no trend test of significance or any individual significance. Right. Thanks. Further discussion? Could I entertain a motion? So uh, could you state your motion? So the motion is there on the board. Uh, incidence of adenocarcinoma, adeno, adenoma or carcinoma combined in the prostate gland shall receive the, the rating of equivocal evidence. So moved. I second? So I'll second. We have moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed? Uh, that's unanimous. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Dr. White, I'll just pass this on to you. I don't need to reread it. All right. Um, so in this case, uh, we'll look, uh, I guess, first at the malignant gliomas. Um, the incidence is 0332. Uh, the justification here was that there was zero in the controls, the concurrent controls. However, there were incidences in all three of the exposure groups. Uh, although the incidence was flat across the SARs, uh, we did see that it was in all three of these exposure groups. Uh, when we compare it to the historical control range, it is within the historical control range of 4%, uh, these uh, being 3.3, 3.3, and 2.2%. Uh, we considered this to be equivocal evidence. Questions or comments? Uh, I, w I would just make a, a comment of one who studies animal carcinogenesis with chemicals, is that there are circumstances where you have a linear response that is saturated at the higher doses. And if you don't look at lower doses, what you will see is a flat response from the doses that you looked at. And so um, this is not necessarily, what I would say is this is not necessarily a evidence of a nonlinear response. It could be evidence of a saturating response. Uh, but that's, that's a hypothesis. Dr. Eaton, I just wanted to echo that. I think that's really important. And also that, to point out. Dr. Davis, yes. could you use the mic real quickly? Uh, sir, I'm sorry. I just wanted to echo what you had to say, sir, about the non-linearity and okay. non-monotonic responses uh, still nonetheless being biologically important, and okay. I think that's what you have here. So, so thank you. I, I, I erred. I uh, appreciate that comment, but we are now limited to comments from the, the board and the committee. Thank you. So we've we've seen these data. Uh, any sorry, any discussion, Dr. Harkwa? So another question: there there was no st significant statistical difference. There was no statistical significance either by trend or by uh, pairwise comparison in this case. Okay. Further comments? Further questions? Do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion, but part of, part of the basis for my motion is also being taking into consideration the commonality that we see between this and findings in the other studies. So I will move that this be upgraded from equivocal to some evidence. Sorry, we are changing the motion. The motion to read for malignant uh, gli for malignant glioma in benign or malignant granular cell tumors in the brain be changed from equivocal to some evidence. Is there a second for this motion? I'll second, but I thought we were just talking about the gliomas. We, well, the way that, that it, anything if, if about we are, granular cell tumors. If we are, then we need to change oh. this. 
Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, yeah. that was a mistake. So, Dr. Felter, how was how was your motion? How is your motion phrased, Dr. Felter, in terms of, of which tumors you're including here? So, so maybe just a clarifying point. In the, in the NTP summary table, they're listed together under brain, and it's under equivocal brain, and it lists them together as if they're considered together. If we want to do them individually, that would not change my motion. I would still move to consider, if we just are talking about the, the gliomas, I would still move to consider them some evidence. But that's not the way it's summarized here. So, yeah, so that, that's, yeah. that's a, a, of concern. I mean, we need to make sure that the data that we're looking at are the same, If because these data are combined, correct? No, these were not considered to be combined of events. We, however, the way we phrase it, we put it under the single uh, organ tissue. And so that's why they were together. Yeah, and these are two tumors of two different cell types. They should each have a different call, or the same call. They should each have a call. Indi individual Indiv call. Yeah, individual. Is this better? But then to be clear, my motion is if we're starting with the gliomas, and just looking at that, then my motion is to upgrade that call from equivocal to some. <coughs> For the incidence of malignant gliomas, Yes. And that's changed to some. Could and I second. Sorry, well, it's fine, second it. But could you repeat your rationale for upgrading the classification? So my rationale, it includes all of the information on the top half of this slide, taking into consideration the hyperplasia as well, but also looking at the information from the other male rat study and both females where there were none of these tumors seen in any of the controls, and there were, we'll, we'll look at the other data sets in a minute, but I, I think it's important to look, look across them for some commonality of response, and that's why, I've, why I'm more comfortable upgrading it. Dr. Harkin? So just asking, so you don't put much weight in statistical uh, uh, significance here. How, how do you, if we are talking with a rubric and we emphasize that, then I would actually kind of push back and say, you know, they have thought over this with a weight of evidence for many, many weeks and probably have a rubric in their heads. So I'm asking how your rubric is. <laughs> So I am a big believer in statistics. I'm not a statistician myself. I think they're really important. I think the early mortality is a really important consideration and all the work that the statisticians do to take that into account so that we don't be misled by numbers on, on paper that are influenced by factors. But I also think that it's important to look at the big picture which includes trends that might not be significant across other studies where I don't have a reason to believe that the male rats exposed to one modality would necessarily be different than the male rats exposed to the other. And in fact, we're seeing common responses between them. So we have, in, in the way I am evaluating these data is not limited to just this data set. It is also taking into consideration what we see with especially the CDMA males, and, and to a lesser extent the females, of course. So, what, how do you take? How do you weight the numbers of controls and the high controls in the exposed versus the limited controls? That I mean, the high exposed to the limited controls in this study that has to be taken into account as well in the design. I mean, it, it, it is a design that they have here, which is, is quite a bit different than, than, um, than others, where you are comp or have a very small number of controls versus, I mean, we have exposed six to one here. And so that's why I asked this question earlier on, what effect does that have on um, on our in, uh, interpretations. So 
that has to be weighted into this as well. And, and these data would be three to one because we're just looking at. Three to one. Thanks for the change. Unless you Corcoran. accept Dr. Uh, George Corcoran, Dr. Felter's uh, belief that this observation should be taken in the context of the three other treated groups, That's in which case we come back to the six to one ratio. That's correct. Right, and, th and then you can also you'd also have to look at the data for each of those others, which includes one that goes well beyond any of the historical controls. So it's not an easy, no, it's not an easy, <laughs> I think everybody would agree that there's, there are a lot of considerations here that are really complex. And this is why we're taking a vote. I personally, based on the totality of the evidence, um, have, have made a, a motion to upgrade this to some evidence, but I could certainly understand where others may come out differently. So, so where we are at on this now is that um, we will, uh, this motion has been made and seconded. We will vote on this, and you can vote um, what you believe. And if it's voted down, then it, it's uh, we go back and look at the original uh, uh, language, which was uh, uh, limit or equivocal evidence versus some evidence. So, um, no, at this point. So, I'm sorry, Dr. Melnick. We we uh, have to limit this discussion to the committee only. Thank you. So I will call uh, the question here and ask for uh, the motion as it's written here. Uh, this is malignant glioma, and we're only talking about malignant glioma in males yeah. uh, and the category of some. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Seven, I believe. Let's say, hold your hands up again. We've got to get this right. On. Seven. Opposed? Four. Okay, the motion carries. Now, now we have changed this, and that, so that was just malignant gliomas, and now we need to visit. We need the, we need the reasons. Is, is the reason but that they believe Oh, yes, I'm equivocal? sorry. I'm sorry. So, yes. So, we got... Dr. Malice, again, we'll start with you. Uh, my reasons would be lack of statistical significance, uh, lack of exceeding the historical controls, and then also the appropriateness of how to put this information in the context of, under, of other findings hasn't been well fleshed out at this time, so I had issue with that. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Corker? Uh, George Corcoran, uh, the only thing I would add would be the slight degradation of the control group due to early uh, premature death before the end of the study, limiting um, the strength of the control to treated comparison. I agree. Okay, so Dr. Harkman's reasons are reasoning is the same. Uh, and the other no vote, Dr. Adler. So I agree with what's been said. Um, this changes the rubric. Um, and I don't think that's appropriate at this stage to do so. However, I do think, although the motion is already carried, that the discussion of the report should look at um, what occurred across two different modalities to see patterns. But it also should then look across other studies conducted elsewhere to look for patterns. Um, because that becomes part of the risk assessment, but it doesn't become part of the hazard characterization for this particular study. Okay, thank you. So now we will take uh, the incidence of benign or malignant granular cell tumors in the brain uh, for males, and that category is equivocal. Any discussion on this? You see, again, the evidence there. No discussion? Could I entertain a motion? I'll move. Thank you. So the motion is for males, the incidence of benign and malignant granular cell tumors in their brain is equivocal. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. Opposed? That uh, is unanimous. I'm sorry, I didn't get the second for that. Thank you. 
I'm sorry, I missed that. Did you you voted? No, he voted. He he seconded the motion. On I, the did, second. I didn't. Okay. I didn't get the second. Thank you. We will move on. The parsistalis in the pituitary gland. Dr. White? All right, for this lesion, uh, we saw in the control group there was an incidence of 17 out of 90. Uh, the uh, incidence in all of the exposure groups is about the same. Uh, we see when we convert those to percentages, the 28 becomes 31%, uh, just so we can compare to the historical controls, and the 26s become 29%. So in this case, uh, all three of the exposures exceed the historical control rate, which was uh, the range uh, went up to 28%. So uh, these uh, are slightly higher than the historical control range. And when we look at the statistics to these, there was no statistical uh, positive trend test, and there was no statistical significance by pairwise comparison. Thank you. Comments? Discussion? Anybody? No discussion? Any motions? I move to I accept. Move. I move to. Okay, so uh, Dr. Felter, you, you broke the line just a nose in front of <laughs> Dr. Heinke, so we'll take, uh, we'll take Dr. Uh, Reinke's uh, uh, as a second. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, raise your hands. Opposed? One opposed, and your reason? Uh, my reason is that I think this perhaps needs to be looked at more carefully, and like the previous discussion of looking at exactly what cell types are affected here, which has not been done yet. And um, and then the, the fact that it's also in the other group, and that there is a, a lot of stuff going on in the endocrine system in general. Okay, we will move on to the next. This is now pheo, uh, pheochromocytoma in males, again, benign, malignant, or complex combined in the adrenal medulla, and the category is equivocal. Uh, so with this, lesion, with this lesion, we're looking at the bottom line here, which is the combination of the lesions, benign, malignant, and com or complex pheochromocytoma. Uh, we see the incidence at the control was 11 uh, out of 88. We see that there's a statistically significant increase by pairwise comparison at the 1.5 and 3 watt per kilogram exposures, but not at the highest exposure. In fact, the incidence at the highest exposure is similar to what we observed in controls. When we look at the historical control range, uh, we see that the range goes up to 28%. Uh, 1.5 watt per kilogram is close to this, and the 3 watt per kilogram uh, slightly exceeds this, uh, this rate. Uh, so again, we call this equivocal based on the fact that this was uh, just in these two exposures of the 1.5 and 3 watt per kilogram exposures. Discussion? Questions? Dr. Ranke? Just to make clear, is there one animal that has both one benign and one malignant pheochromocytoma in the uh, three W group? Because it counts two. Correct. Yes, that, that would be the case. Rick Adler, same question I had regarding uh, malignant schwannomas in the heart. What would get this to go up a grade from equivocal to some evidence? What what criteria would need to be met? So this this particular tumor is pretty variable in our in our experience, and so we would probably expect to see a little um, more evidence of a dose response and um, a higher response. Dr. Corcoran. George Corcoran, what is the propensity for the benign lesion to progress? Um, well, if you look up oh, at this could data, you, use you your can microphone? see. Oh, this is Dave Malarkey, the NTP. Look at this table, and it would suggest that uh, there's not a lot of progression to malignancy. 
Because okay. you have one, one, four. In, in this they, case, they are I, believed to progress. I guess I'd ask in, in your broader experience for yeah. this type of tumor, yeah. the potential to progress and historic progression rates. I would say a, a low to medium potential to progress. Okay. And uh, these numbers are in, in line with that. Perfect. Dr. Reinke? Um, were the malignant ones based on, uh, or their malignancy based on uh, metastasis, or was it just the ingrowth into the surrounding tissue without any other signs of malignancy? Because this is the difficulty for this tumor type uh, to be differentiated. Uh, Mark Sesta, it was mainly the uh, invasion into the surrounding tissues. Dr. Harkum. I hate to ask this question, but um, because George Corcoran is next to me and he brought up this rubric thing. So, um, so um, if you were to put a weight, and uh, what I heard from uh, Dr. Buker, um, that a lot of the weight was put on the fact that it didn't have a dose response. Well, I can't really weight them. Um, I, <laughs> these are, uh, as I, in my mind, uh, these are variable tumors with a predominance towards the benign forms. So it would take more, in my estimation, to move it up to the next category. But everybody has a different way of, of weighting these in their mind, and the experience that I have, that's, that's what I do. Great. Thank you. Dr. Klein? I, I would like to, to move to, uh, to upgrade this, uh, this uh, tumor type to some evidence. So a motion has been made to upgrade pheochromocytoma to some evidence. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is that could, Dr. Adler? Could we, could we ask for just a quick synopsis of the rationale? Sure. My, my rationale is, is uh, if you look on page 109 of the original report, the um, for the full report, uh, there's a there's an incidence of hyperplasia in the shams that seems just eyeballing the numbers to be moving into the neoplasia uh, row uh, in the uh, radiation treated animals. Also, uh, I I don't uh, weight as heavily the need for uh, uh, a linear dose response curve, and uh, finally um, I. I think of all pheochromos all pheochromocytomas as potentially malignant, whether they've gone anywhere yet or not. So I think of them as perhaps a nastier tumor, irrespective. It's it's hard to tell uh, what their behavior is going to be. Other discussion? If not, I will. I'll just add Dr. to that Adler. Uh, statistical significance, and we're at the top end of a very broad range of um, very limited historical control. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to include pheochromocytomas, both uh, benign, malignant, or complex, of the adrenal medulla as some evidence. Um, all in favor, raise your hand. I'm counting six votes. Just one Opposed? Put, put them back up for just a second, please. Sorry. In favor. Sure you'll get everybody. All of those opposed? It's six to four. We will start again with Dr. Malice. Yeah, sorry. So, we did I miscount? Yeah, I was, was just, there an abstention? I, yeah, Dr. Corcoran. Oh, so there is an abstention, and oh. I should have asked for that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank okay. you. So, it's six, four, one. Okay. Dr. Malice. Uh, lack of establishment for reason behind a nonlinear dose response curve, uh, previously cited control issues, being very close to the upper end of your historical control range. Um, those would be my main reasons. Thank you. Dr. Corcoran, you want to uh, explain your reason for abstaining? 
honestly, I believe it's too close to call. And I, one day I could call one way and one day I could call the next. That's why it's so important to have a rubric. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, was it Dr. Runke? Yep. Yeah. Um, so I think in this, well, many what has been said, but on the other side, this is a quite common tumor. Uh, we didn't see the metastasizing malignancies. And uh, on the other side, we had a decreased survival in the control group so that uh, I would have expected more than if they would have been living longer. Thank so you. For and, uh, Dr. Harkum. Yep. It was good that you left me out because he nailed it. <laughs> okay. Dr. Adler. So I vote in favor and second to the motion and would also just like to point out, although maybe it's sophomoric at this point, the control range is created also by this data set. So if you subtract out these animals, the historical control is much lower. So it would make this stand out even more. Okay. So, so we are now on to islet, uh, pa pancreatic islet cell adenoma or carcinoma combined, which has been. Uh, we had an abstention. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So, doc, Dr. Kaufman, did use the mic, please? My reason is uh, that uh, this tumor is similar to what, what uh, uh, Dr. Rinka and uh, Dr. Hakema uh, oh, yes. said uh, are common tumors and, uh, and also due to the uh, survival rate which was low, uh, um, I do not believe that this is a true effect. Thank you. Okay, Dr. White. All right, so we'll move on to the pancreatic islets. Uh, for this, the call was made on the bottom line here for the combined incidences of adenomas and carcinomas. Uh, the incidence in controls was 13 out of 90. Uh, we had a statistically significant increase at the 1.5 exposure. Uh, and actually, as we increased the SAR, uh, there was actually a, a, a smaller incidence in the lesion as we got to the three and the six watt per kilogram exposures. Uh, there was obviously no statistically significant uh, trend test. And when we look at the historical controls for this, uh, the 13 in the control in this study is 14%, which is at the high end of the range, uh, which is uh, from four to 16%. Uh, the 27 out of 89 is 30%, uh, and then the 19 and 16 are 22 and 18%, so these are very close to the uh, historical control range. Question, <clears throat> questions or discussion? I have a quick comment. Yes, Dr. Mellis. Do you have an easy way to differentiate between the historical control range that you show up there that contains both historical and concurrent data and historical data excluding this study? But available right now, um, unless somebody has that available. Um, in this case, uh, for this you could subtract out of that 26, you could subtract out 13 uh, and then subtract out 90 from the, uh, the denominator there. <laughs> Uh, I know this in this case there's 14%, so that 16% must be coming from another study. So they're similar. So, right. Just moving forward for other studies, um, after Dr. Adler had the point about what the current study's range is versus the historical, that might be something seriously worth considering. Because I know I'd based uh, the judgment on one of the, my judgment on one of the previous items based on the historical control, personally overlooking that it might not be historical excluding the concurrent control. Thank you. Further discussion? Would someone like to make a motion? <clears throat> I'll move to accept this as equivocal. Thank you. Second? Me too. <laughs> Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Thank 
Thank you. Opposed? Abstentions? That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Now we're moving on to females. In this case, uh, may, I, may, I, may I nominate another oh. neoplasm to the equivocal category? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh. sh yes, you may. Okay. Uh, so I'd like to nominate adrenocortical adenoma for equivocal. Can somebody refresh us as to the data for that? Mark, what specifically was? I, I'm trying. <laughs> Sorry. Mark, what page are you on? Do uh, you have a page number? I, I'm not there yet. All right. Uh, uh, page uh, 113. 113. Oh, sorry, this is none. Sorry. I, I apologize. Okay. Not 113. Not 113. I'm sorry. It appears I'm ill prepared for this proposal. Sorry. So that, to be clear, this is male GSM. No, adrenocortical adenoma. I, I apologize for getting lost in this. I did have a reason for bringing it up. Why only the adenoma? You would not use the carcinoma? So um, let, let's use microphones so people can hear us. So Dr. Felter, you had a question? Yeah, I, I just, well, uh, it sounds like we're still making sure that we're all looking at the same thing. And I thought I heard you say adrenal cortex, the adenoma, but there's also carcinoma listed right underneath of it. So I was, I'm just asking for a clarification of which tumors we're considering. And the and the normal procedures for these is to combine adenos, adenomas and carcinomas for the same tissue. Is that correct? Do we know what the historical control range is? I think we're still looking for the data from this study. <laughs> I, I, I'm very sorry. I, I, I did have a reason for doing it, and I apologize. So the, the cortical uh, adenomas was one in the control, four in the low, two and one, and carcinomas were zero, one, zero, one. So one, four, two. One four two one. One four two one and zero one zero one zero one. Zero one zero one. So those are the data there. I don't know if the historical information is available on this tumor type. Okay. And the, there's no historical information. There there is. I'll pull that up. Okay, thank you. Is that captured correctly at least to differentiate the numbers? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. So um, my, my rationale uh, it was really based on this theme that I saw of a, of a, um, a potentially uh, stress-related mechanism. Uh, and the, uh, I, I thought the, uh, the number of, uh, numbers of four and two were striking uh, in comparison to the, to the concurrent controls. I didn't feel strongly enough about the carcinoma. And um, I think that's it. So yeah, my apologies for not being able to find the right table. Do, do, do we know whether the, the carcinoma, the one animal with carcinoma in the mid and high groups were different from adenomas? Or are there any that had both? We don't know. We can't tell from this table. You cannot tell that from this. Okay. And for clarification, are you suggesting both adenoma 
or Carth, I might want to know exactly what the um, statement should be with regard to the equivocal evidence. What's I, the, I, I'm suggesting adenoma only. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Felder. So I, I think Dr. we Felder, should. Excuse me. We've got some. Oh, sorry. Ch Chad has some historical data. The uh, historical control background rate for that is uh, the three other studies that don't include the one there. We have uh, six percent, zero six, and so the average background is three percent. Uh, well, you have it pulled up already. Okay. So the average background is three percent with a range of zero to six. Is that correct? And is, am I correct in looking on page 192 of the report that on uh, non-neoplastic lesions in this group that it, there were no hyperplasias? Uh, where's 192. That's in the PDF. That would be correct. That, that table captures everything. In the uh, in the report, uh, I will say we we did look at this and didn't feel like it rose to the level of equivocal. Okay, now that we have the data in front of us, we have a motion, but it has not yet been seconded. Do I have a second? All right, hearing no second, uh, the motion does not go forward, and we will move on. Thank you. So now we are at looking at uh, female sprigged dolly rats, no evidence of carcinogenic activity. Uh, any, there's no real data to look at because no, there's sorry. no evidence. <laughs> uh, Dr. Felder. So this is one that I encouraged folks to, to take a look at the, the, uh, the heart because there, there, it was only at the mid dose level. Um, but that's there. There was a finding of the malignant schwannomas in in all of the different four bioassays. So the incidence there was zero zero two zero, which in and of itself would not raise a lot of concern. But I was considering that in the context of all of the findings that we've had for the heart. Thank you. Maybe people can just take a minute to make sure that they're familiar with those data. So, so the evidence is for a, a, a malignant schwannoma of the heart in females, there were 0020. So, so right, this is the one I, I had brought up earlier where there was a malignant schwannoma in the endocardium and one in the myocardium, and then there was also another tumor in the same dose group in the epicardium, but it was a paraganglioma, which was not added in, but there were actually three tumors in the heart, but one of them was of a different cell type. This is none in the controls, low or high dose. This data is on page 207 of the PDF. So uh, if there are any other questions or clarifications of the data, so um, we can either just make that note or uh, Dr. Felter, you, you can certainly make a motion if you'd like to move this into the another category other than no evidence. I'm, I'm really struggling. I think at a, at a minimum, it should be acknowledged, even if it doesn't rise to the level of equivocal. But my understanding of equivocal, going back to all the discussions that were very helpful, was may or may not be. So on that basis, look, looking at the entire body of evidence before us, <clears throat> I, I, I guess I'll go ahead and move to upgrade it to equivocal. Okay, so motion has been made to include in the equivocal category, uh, malig it's malignant schwannomas of the heart in females, correct? I'll second. So it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? So I just remind us the historical incidence of this. Zero. Z zero. Zero. 
And I think during the description it said that the ones in the endocardium are are very uncommon, and that one of these is endocardium and one is myocardium. Is, is that correct? Dr. Ranke? It's the other way around. The more common ones are the endocardial ones, not the intramural ones. So the I would have the concern with the intramural one. Further discussion? So we have a motion on the floor to include, under the equivocal evidence, malignant schwannomas of the heart. All in favor, raise their hand. I have nine. Uh, I think we have a, an error in our historical control. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. We're going okay. re, uh, to re-vote after a further discussion because there were some misinformation provided. Oh, it's, it's zero. I have zero here. Yeah, it, it, sorry, it is zero. So it is zero. Okay, so the so the evidence that we just discussed stand, stands as presented. Okay, so so could you um, give us a number of that the zero relates to? One hundred and fifty. Oh, it's similar to the other ones where we have the other okay. studies, so it's one hundred and fifty. Yes. Okay, thanks. So zero out of one hundred and fifty was the uh, historical control, which included the study no, no, or not? No, not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Zero. Oh, okay. Included. Okay. If we include this as zero out of two thirty nine, then okay. So, Dr. Harkema, of clarification, why it didn't rise to significance? Uh, I think just the the number of the incidents is uh, of two plus. I think another thing that we uh, considered here was that there was no Schwann cell hyperplasia uh, in the males. We did see some Schwann cell hyperplasia in the low and high dose groups. Uh, we didn't see here at all. Uh, if you look at hyperplasia, there was no hyperplasia in either the controls or any of the exposed groups. And again, there was uh, just the lesion at the the mid dose group of two. Maybe I didn't ask the question correct. I just wanted the statistics. Yeah, there was no no, there was no statistical significance. And the reason for that, in a layman's terms, <laughs> a why? So you have zero, and you have two in the other one. So that, right, and just um, there. So so in, in any, we only had one group with with tumors. And so um, the, when you have zero, the, the effect size is, is zero, the, the increase. So um, the only possible comparison would be the, the control to, the, to the, the group that had two, and that the two was not enough to, um, to detect. Uh, a, a sample size issue, in essential, I mean. It's well, <clears throat> it, the, the effect, the number of, of tumors uh, over control is, right. is too small right. For, right. for significance. Dr. Corcoran. Um, before we, uh, this comes to a vote, I've gotten a rising level of discomfort in this call and perhaps um, future calls. And that is, if you look at the totality of the report, it's not uncommon to see one or two versus zero throughout the report. And I'd like to make, I, I'd like to be comforted with the knowledge that we're treating all of those situations with the same gravity and the same degree of detailed evaluation as we're doing here. So if we don't do that, we might be accused or thought of as about picking our favorite organ or our, uh, or one we, for, for, for any reason other than following the hard evidence. I. I could follow up on that, which my reason for seconding is that because we did vote that it was clear evidence in the males, therefore I think that raises the level of suspicion to look at this in the females. Other comments? I, 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 George Corcoran, I do like the term suspicion. <laughs> Uh, if, if I were just to make a, a comment on this, it, uh, what strikes me and I think others is the, the relative rarity of this particular type of tumor uh, from from both historical controls and just in general. So so the, uh, the motion has been made and seconded and uh, I will call for the vote again which is to 
uh, upgrade sh um, incidence of malignant schwannomas in the heart in females in GSM modulated uh, exposures to equivocal. All in favor? I count nine. Opposed? Two. Dr. Corcoran. Uh, for the record, for the record, I I don't believe there's enough of a signal here for me to make a firm call to elevate it to equivocal, because part of the equivocal position indicates you think there's some sound evidence there, but it's not enough to move it to the sum category. Thank you, Dr. Harkema. So I was equivocal myself, and so I couldn't really make it. I, I, over a short period of time, I don't believe I'm more a deliberative person. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, we will move on. Do you want to do non neoplastic for this or wait till the end? Yeah, so, so that, that's it for uh, neoplastic tumors. Is, let, before we move on, is there anybody that has any other neoplastic lesion in females? <laughs> In GSM that they would like to raise for consideration of of equivocal. Okay, hearing none. So why don't we go ahead in in the males and look at non neoplastic lesions. Um, and can, can you scroll down a little bit? Yeah, there? sure. I'm sorry. Um, do you want to? Do you want the female, the males first, and then the females, or do you want to see it well, all? Well, that's what I was trying to figure out if we're going, if we have one motion for all of them, uh, or whether. Let me just fix the um, view, and then maybe you can look at it. I, all. I'm trying to figure out what the report says. So, just a point of clarity: should that be non-neoplastic proliferative, as opposed to just non-neoplastic, which could be anything? <clears throat> Um, there's cardiomyopathy listed there as well, which we don't consider proliferative. Oops, sorry. What I'm what I'm trying to understand is what the, what is the motion or the, the the motion as it's phrased in the draft report. Is this draft report has it all? The draft report has the motion for all of them. They're in all the put case. together in the draft report. However, it may be simpler for you guys to look at the male and the female. Okay, I would agree. And but all of these outcomes, including the right ventricular cardiomyopathy, were included in what was the what was the list, yeah. And so you're not you're not rating them in terms of the level of evidence, just Yeah, this is this is more of a yes and no. Okay. okay. <laughs> So, so the motion then, or what we would be voting on, is to, to whether we agree with the list that was provided in the report of non-neoplastic lesions. Is that, is that correct? That, that's correct. These are mainly indications of potential target organs for this particular agent. So if somebody was really doing their homework and looked at all of the pathology, they could potentially say there's something missing on this list, <laughs> I suppose. Um, uh, or if they looked at it and they might wonder why something is on that list when they didn't think it was uh, was uh, right. biologically relevant. Is that Dr. Corcoran? And, and Dr. Eaton, this is simply a yes or a no vote with no degree, that, that's no correct. differentiation. That's correct. This is just Thank a you. yes or a no vote in terms of not the description and the listing of a non-neoplastic lesions without any, without any evidence or discussion of severity or even dose relatedness, I guess. Any, any discussion? So the motion would be to approve this list. Do I have a motion? Is it, so we moved. Do, excuse me, are we doing just males? Are we doing males? Let's just do males okay. first, okay. I want to be sure. This is for males. So was that a, a motion? Yeah, sorry. Okay, thank you. I'll second. Dr. Felder mo moved and uh, Dr. Jones seconded. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Uh, abstentions? Uh, I think we're unanimous on that one. Uh, now uh, I re uh, call for a motion for the same thing with females. The 
this includes just uh, right ventricular cardiomyopathy and C-cell hyperplasia. I'll move. Uh, one question. This is focal C-cell hyperplasia, so is it diffuse or is it combined? I believe it's just focal. So we have a motion. Has it been seconded? And was the motion by Dr. Felter or Dr. Dr. Jones, I believe. And Jones. Okay, thank you. I'll second. Dr. Adler seconded. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? That's unanimous. Thank you. Now we move on to CDMA modulation. Back to males, back to malignant schwannomas of the heart. And the rating in the draft report is as some evidence of carcinogenic activity. Uh, you see the numbers there, Dr. White. Yeah, the uh, numbers are very similar here to what we saw with GSM. Uh, the rationale is also very similar. Uh, we see uh, zero in the control. Uh, we see an occurrence of two and three in the low and mid dose. And we see a statistically significant uh, increase at the 6 watt per kilogram exposure. Uh, statistically, we also see a, a significant positive trend here. Questions or discussion? Dr. Adler? Same question as I had when we saw this before. What's the line between some evidence and clear evidence for, for this? It, this was the similar reasoning that we provided with the, the first GSM, the, the magnitude of the response, the concerns of the control. I would like to move that this be elevated to clear evidence. So it's been moved and seconded to put uh, male sprig dolly rat uh, CDMA exposed from some to clear evidence for in, uh, malignant schwannoma in the heart. Further discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? Two opposed, so we have nine, four, and two opposed. Dr. Malice. So same reasons for with the other modulation. Uh, one point that I would like to raise the study's been constructed so that everything was separate. Your different modulations, male versus female, mouse versus rat. But as we've discussed it, everybody's very, very interested in integration of that data. So that, that's more sort of a note as this is done moving forward. Had work been done to understand how the data could be integrated, it would be a little bit easier to have some of these discussions. And that, that's what I struggle with. Um, is, I, I see what you're saying, if you take it in context, if you take the result of the heart lesions in context with all the other groups, there is an argument to elevate. Um, my only hang up is the work hasn't been done to integrate that information, but it is a very valid point and it was work that could have been done with the foresight. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Klein, I believe. I, yeah, I, I just, um, I, I'm just concerned about the the uh, low numbers, and just didn't didn't want to uh, go so far. I'm comfortable with uh, the sum designation, just not clear. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on. Hi, right. Dr. Halcrum. I'm sorry, I was reading the wrong line. Um, can I have a revote? Oh. So, yes, we, we can revote if there was uncertainty or I'm what sorry, you were looking at. I was at. reading the wrong. Okay. So, I, so. I would have voted no. You, so, you would switch to a, a, a no. We you have you a, would be going. Uh, so, okay. So, would yeah. explain your rationale? Actually, the control thing. Okay. Yeah. So, Dr. Harkema, you're changing your vote. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Dr. Eller, you had a question? Well, I'm just reading something from the report that talks about the NTP criteria, and one of the considerations is specifically stated as 
supporting information from proliferative lesions, hyperplasia in the same site of neoplasia, or other experiments, same lesion in other sex or species. So while it might be saying proliferative lesions, comma, hyperplasia, I believe that the same logic applies to whether you see similar tumors in a different part of the study, different gender, et cetera. So I think it is a consideration and in the integration of, of, the, of the study. It might not be a pure statistical one, but it is a one that is biologically logical to me. Yes. Thank you for that clarification. Dr. Whiteley. Uh, just a question to the NTP uh, staff. So this is one where there's a, looks like there's a dose-related decrease in lat latency. So what did that factor in at all to your thought process? I don't, I don't have the data in front of me right now, but uh, th that is one of the things that we look at. We look at, as, as Dr. Blastow mentioned, uh, a whole host of things. Uh, so that was one of the things that we did look at. So it was day 730 in the low dose, 642 in the mid, and 4, 488 in the high dose. Okay, so um, where are we at? So that, so that we voted on that, and we've recorded that. We've recorded everybody's uh, comments uh, that had a uh, no vote. So we are now on to uh, malignant, malignant glioma in the brain, which uh, was uh, rated as equivocal in males for uh, for this exposure. Um, so for this lesion, uh, again, in the controls, and there was zero in the concurrent controls. Uh, there was also uh, no incidence of this lesion at the low and midi medium uh, dose groups. Uh, we did see an incidence of three at the highest exposure. Uh, this was uh, slightly below and within the historical control range of zero to four. Uh, we did see some uh, Cleo cell hyperplasia uh, as well at the lowest and the highest exposure. Thank you. Discussion? What, Dr. Lin? Yeah, just a clarification in regard to the historical controls. Uh, has there been an ongoing correction, or this is the uh, same historical control that was used for all the other uh, tumors? This is no, this. Just adding this is just zero, zero on the other hand. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, the uh, historical c control included any of the current ones. So this, uh, the reminder that this is Jabalai Stone, that these, uh, the sectioning was different for the brains here, so we don't have four studies. We have the two other studies and then the concurrent control, so it comes to 190. Okay. So uh, further discussion, yes, Dr. So, Felton. So then just to be clear, that two um, didn't come from this study. So it came from, and given the range is zero to four, you had one study with zero out of 50 and one study with two out of 50. That's, That's correct. correct. Uh, further discussion? Uh, uh, I'd entertain a motion. Just like in the other group, I think this should, I move to elevate this to some evidence. Is there a second? I'll second it. So it's been moved and seconded to move this to, for malignant glioma in the brain from equivocal to some evidence in males uh, based on a response in a high dose group of three. Further discussion? Based on more than that, right? Well. But I mean, that wasn't the sole basis for Well, I mean, I was just reflecting that, there, that the only response was three animals in the high dose. Um, correct, but I'm looking at other groups, and as Dr. Adler had pointed out, some of the evidence from other studies as well to weight this a little heavier. Sure, thank you. Okay, I'll, uh, all in favor? Say six. Opposed? Abstain? We're still, we're missing one, aren't we? Oh, abstention, Dr. Klein? No, I'm opposed. You're opposed. Okay. okay. 
Harkama. Maze. Six four one. Harkama. So Maze. that motion carries. So can we have the reasons, please? Pardon me? I need the reasons for no. Oh, yes. The reasons for, uh, for no. Uh, Dr. Let's see. Where did we start? Dr. Malice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a, in a bad spot for this. Um, my main reason was lack of exceeding the historical controls, plus other previously talked about items. Dr. Corcoran. I would reiterate the four items that have come up recurring and recurring basis for the negative votes for the higher classification. Dr. Hart. I agree. Dr. Klein. I, I, nothing to add. I, I, I'm aligned with the, uh, with the other dissenters. Thank you. And the reason for an abstention? Yes, Dr. Well, Adler's opposition. Since the score is six to four, my abstention doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, but I could equivocate over this all day long, and so um, I'd have a hard time okay. saying it is or is not based on what the evidence that I have. That's fine. Thank you. Had it been five to five, your abstention would have made me exceedingly <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> Okay, um, we will move on to males and uh, the adenoma of the pars distalis and the pituitary gland. Uh, Dr. White. Uh, so for this lesion, we have uh, 17 out of 89 in the controls. Uh, we don't see an increase in the 1.5 or 6 watt per kilogram. Uh, we do see a statistically significant increase at the mid dose. Um, the uh, incidence here is not just statistically significant, but it exceeds the historical control range, the range being between 10 and 28 uh, percent. The 34 actually is 38 um, percent, but this was the only place that we saw uh, any type of response was at the mid-dose. Questions? So how did we declare this um, in GMS? Pardon me? Uh, remind me what we oh. voted 10 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Just a second. Good question. Uh, equivocal? Yeah, equivocal. Equivocal. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? I move to accept it. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. The motion is to accept the classification of the pars distalis pituitary gland tumors as equivocal in males with CDMA exposure. This is CDMA, right? Yeah. CDMA exposure. <laughs> um, do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Opposed? That's uh, uh, abstentions. Seeing none, that's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> now we move on to um, adenomas or carcinomas of the liver uh, combined as uh, classified as equivocal in males again. Uh, Dr. Wyde. <laughs> Uh, with this lesion, again, we're looking at the combined incidences at the bottom of the table, uh, adenomas and carcinomas. Uh, we see zero in the control. Uh, the incidence at three watts per kilogram of four uh, exceeds the historical control range, which was zero to two percent, uh, but we saw no statistical significance, uh, whether it was by uh, trend test or pairwise uh, comparisons. Discussion? Questions? I have a motion. Second. Second. Dr. Feltler, second. All in favor? Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? That appears to be unanimous. Numerical correction to the sum in the three watt exposure to five. Excuse me. Oh yeah. Right. Uh, I believe there was an animal that had at both. Both. So that would explain it. Withdraw the correction. 
So we move on now to female uh, rats with CDMA exposure in the category of equivalent, equivocal. Uh, and we have uh, malignant glioma in the brain. Uh, Dr. White? All right, so for this lesion, uh, glioma in the female brain, uh, the incidence was zero in controls. Uh, we had uh, the only occurrence that we saw was in the lowest exposure at the 1.5 watt per kilogram uh, exposure. We saw three animals in this dose group. Uh, there was a very low incidence in historical control, zero to two percent. Uh, the incidence uh, that we observed at that lowest group was not statistically significant from controls and there was no uh, trend test that was positive. Discussion? Questions? Do I have a motion? I would like to move to increase this to some evidence just because we have done this and for the same reasons with the gliomas in the other groups. So that's a motion? To, yes. Yes, to make this, uh, change this to some evidence for malignant glioma in the uh, female Sprigdalia rat CDMA exposure. Further discussion? Do we have a second? Is there a second? I'll second that and add the basis for that is also strengthened by the, the grade of 2.0 for the hyperplasia in the glial cell, which I think is pretty high compared to what we saw elsewhere. Further discussion? All in favor of uh, moving uh, malignant glioma in the brain in females to some evidence from equivocal? Raise your hands. All opposed? So it's uh, six to four. That motion fails. Dr. Reinke? I have an abstention. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I thought oh, wait, I counted <laughs> to 11. I missed okay, you. So can we put our hands up? So it's 5-4-1 five, five, so then. No, 6-4-1. I need to make sure I got four, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, let, let's do it again. The, uh, the, I think the count is 4-6-1, but let's, let's try that again. All in favor of this motion for some. That's four. All opposed? That's six, and abstentions, one, thank you. And those opposed, uh, where do we start? Gee, Dr. Malice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now wait, do you do the opposed even yes. if? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, la lack, of lack of statistical significance among the other four items we've constantly discussed. Dr. Corker. The same. Same. Dr. Harkema. The same. Um, Dr. Whiteley. Same. Okay. Dr. Klein. Uh, uh, nothing to add. Same rationale. Who else did I miss? Dr. Adler. Well, I agree with that. Uh, however, I again state that I think the discussion of the report needs to look at these in combination and not necessarily under NTP criteria declare them, but point out that there is a pattern because it is one of the considerations listed under the decision criteria within the NTP report. Thank you. And Dr. Reinke, your, your abstention. Yeah, my abstention was made because I was absolutely not sure whether to raise it or not. And uh, so having it as equivocal, um, we had this discussion on equivocal and some, and uh, so I was really undecided in this case. So now, um, to speed things along, I would entertain a motion to go back to the original uh, classification, which was for equivocal. So moved. Second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Yeah, you can, yeah, you can <laughs> vote. It doesn't, it's a new motion, so. Eight. I count. Opposed? Two. Abstain? One. That adds up. Okay, good. So, um, so we are at equivocal for the malignant glioma in the brain. 
And thank you for that discussion. Excuse so, me. I'm sorry, the, the chair. Uh, rationale. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't get the um the I didn't get the person who made the motion and the second. I'm sorry. I missed that. You were the second. Okay. And who made the motion? Thank Dr. you, Dr. Corcoran. Right. Thank, thank you. you. And now the discussion or the reasoning for the the nays. Doctor. So my primary reason is biological plausibility combined with overall weight of the evidence from all of the data sets. Because I, I think the, the, the information in the in up front that MTP provides, it should be considered as we're considering each of these determinations. So not just at the very end, but it, it does factor in. So for me, although it's a uh, only a single um, in incidence. I also mentioned the the degree of severity of the hyperplasia is higher than what we saw in most other cases. So I, that factored into my decision as well. Thank you. Others. Same. Same. Okay. Others. Abstentions. No, it's just. The I think I'd like to change my abstention to a no because I'm in agreement with Dr. Felter. Okay. Here. Did we have one other abstention, or was that it? No. That's it. I just had that. Okay. Good. Can, so we are can now. Can I move also to elevate the um, endocardial and myocardial schwannomas in the heart? Uh, okay. Um, what, yeah. what? Do we have those data? It's it's on page um, two sixty. You mean add them? They're not listed right now. Yeah, yeah. add them. So, so the the motion is to add uh, the endocardial schwannomas or cardiac schwannomas in females to the equivocal category. Is that right? To I think to the some evidence category. I second that. No, I'm confused. Sorry. I'm confused. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is a tumor type that's currently not listed in the summary. And so, so you're moving it from not listed to some. And we hadn't gotten there yet. I assumed at the end you would ask if there's a tumor yeah. type that we would add. I see. Yes. So. Okay. Well, let's just move forward with that. Okay. Okay. So that's what? fine. Uh, and so. Dr. Adler, can we put the numbers up? Yeah, that's what so we're looking for right now. And I'm sorry. I don't yeah, although the motion's that. been carried to put it on as some evidence, um, I just go on the record as saying, once I see the numbers, I might be more inclined to list it as equivocal. The numbers are zero in control, two zero two for the schwannomas, and for Schwann cell hyperplasia, it's zero one one one. Zero two zero and zero one one one. Zero two zero two. I'm sorry. I'm confused. Just, just hold a second. I'm sorry, I can't keep. So this is located in table forty nine on page one thirty nine. It's below the males. This is. In the PDF, the, it's on page two sixty. Cardio schwannoma in females. That's the first one. Zero two. Okay, and then the second one is the schwannoma. Oh. Does that look right? Yeah. Well, I'm sure it will. We have a grade up on Oh, we're not. We're. Yeah. So is this? Have I written it correctly? <laughs> so we just you just switch screens there. Excuse me. Yes, Mary, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Historical is zero. Okay, so we have zero, two, zero in the controls, two in the low dose, zero in the mid dose, and two in the high dose. Oh, I don't know why this thing's on here. I don't know how to get rid of it, honestly. Oh, space key, thank you. Thank you. And there was some hyperplasia in the one with hyperplasia in each of the three exposed groups. And the, and the motion is to move this to some evidence, not equivocal, correct? Okay. That was the motion. So, so Mary, that should be yes. Thank you. And do we have a second for that? The hyperplasia is it right there below the. Um, oh, well, I'm sorry. The. Uh, 
the one in the 1.5 watts per kilogram is three severity grade. There is no severity grade on the three watts per kilogram, which I don't know why. And then the one in the high dose group is a severity of one. And in the PDF, this is on page 274. So the severity for the three that are there is, is three uh, unstated and one. Okay. So we have a motion that has been seconded, I believe. Who is the seconder? Has it been seconded? Oh, I thought so. Okay. So Dr. Felter has seconded the motion made by Dr. Jones to include this in the category of some evidence. Further discussion? Uh, all in those in favor, raise your hand, please. Yeah, I was going to say you are going to vote for your motion, aren't you? Okay. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. All those opposed? Two, three, four, five, six opposed. So that uh, uh, abstentions, one abstention. Mm -hmm. The reason is why um, I would go for equivocal, but there was no chance, though. Okay. Other others who voted no. Dr. Rinke, did you vote no or abstain? Abstain. You abstained. Okay, so so that's that motion is voted down, and so now I would entertain a motion uh, if somebody would like to move this because this is not in the report as a finding at all. So we would need a motion to move this into the equivocal evidence. So moved. Move. Is there a second? Yep, yeah, more. Moved and seconded? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, Dr. Corcoran. And Dr. Wolf, you may want to revise that to say endocardial and, and myocardial. Okay. We, to get to two, we have to add both those categories together. Okay. Thank you. So the motion is to put uh, in females endocardial and myocardial schwannoma uh, in the equivocal category from previously not being uh, categorized. All in favor? I have a uh, question. Clarification, yes. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Lin and then Dr. Harkema. Do we really want to be that specific in this case? Then it will be different categories. Can we just say? without the two qualifications, endocardial versus, as well as the myocardial, just simply heart cardiac? I would recommend to try, use the term that we have taken before, which would be malignant schwannoma. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So we want to change this to malignant schwannoma? Yes, thank you. But essentially, it's what I'm Yeah, just, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Harkema? I would like to hear from um, the NTP why that did not rise to that. I would say in this case that it was there was no statistical significance either by trend test or pairwise and uh, I think it was brought up before that you know you see lots of ones and twos in these studies um, and so in this case we didn't believe that it rose to the level of uh, equivocal evidence even. Okay so we have a motion on the floor that's been moved and seconded all in favor. But before we vote sorry uh, Dr. Yes. Corcoran I think you were pointing out the second line combines the two types of schwannomas, is that right? They're not both endocardial, they're one of each. Dr. Corcoran, the two incidences reported on page 260. Uh, there were ones for endocardial and two ones for myocardial. No? No, no I had that incorrect. But I think um, the second line down, we need to remove the word endocardial yes. and replace it with malignant. Okay. Okay. Sure. That's Thank the, you. Just. But if if we now if we're just... referring to malignant schwannomas combined, that those data are correct as shown. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, I will call for the vote again. All in favor, raise their hand. Nine. All opposed? Oops. Two. Dr. Ballas. 
<laughs> um, I'm going to go with the relatively small numbers, and then I think I understood that the severity score was much higher for 1.5 kilowatts opposed to 6 kilowatts, and that struck me as odd, especially since I focused in on what the severity score really meant earlier today. Dr. Harkin. I, I didn't dream to be a statistician, but um, and <laughs> I'm falling in the same line of this, uh, and also I have a trouble with uh, controls again. Thank you. Okay, we will move on. What's the next category? I think we are. So the, now we are into non-neoplastic. Yeah. What did I miss? Oh, I missed this one. So That's we right. Here we are. We're up right here. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, so we have the pheochromocytoma in the females, right? Right. Okay. Uh, Dr. White? So uh, with this lesion, we're looking at, the again, the bottom line of this table for the benign, malignant, and complex, uh, the combination of the lesions. Uh, we see in the control group that there is one, an incidence of one. There's a statistically significant increase at the lowest exposure. Uh, there's higher numbers in the three and six watt per kilogram exposures, but these were not statistically significant. And when we look at the historical control rates, uh, the range goes from zero to 10 percent. Uh, even the statistically significant incidence at 1.5 watts per kilogram uh, falls within or at the high end of the uh, historical control range. Questions or comments? This is in the equivocal category. Do I have a motion? I make the motion. Second. Second. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? 10 0 1. Thank you. And your reason for abstaining? Since others took the liberty of abstaining when it was too difficult of a call. <laughs> <laughs> This okay. was my choice here, uh, again, because I was uh, also considering what we saw in some of the, ad the adrenals from the other studies. I'm not, I'm not convinced it didn't rise to the level of, of some evidence. Thank you. Okay, so now, now we move on to non-neoplastic lesions. Again, this is a, uh, a yes-no vote in terms of, uh, of uh, Non-neoplastic changes observed and reported in the report uh, for males. We'll do that first. We've got right ventricular cardiomyopathy, uh, Schwann cell hyperplasia at the highest dose. Uh, Dr. Why do you want to add anything to what's on the screen there? No, I think that looks good as it is. Questions or discussion? I have a motion. Are we just doing, well, I'll wait to see what the motion is. I didn't know if you were doing males and then females or if we're doing. Um, uh, this is, I'm doing males first, and females okay. separately. Okay, thank you. For males? I'll move. Second? Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Abstentions? That's unanimous. Uh, for females? Uh, there's just uh, glial cell hyperplasia with one at the uh, mid dose and one at the high dose. That's all that's listed. Any any further questions? Uh, I have a motion. Dr. Move Corcoran has moved a second. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. All opposed? Extensions, that's unanimous. I think that's. So, I think we are like done. Excuse me? No? Wait, wait, can I, can, can I make a, I'm not sure if this is a typical proposal, but um, how to phrase this. I would like to nominate that the neuroendocrine system as an entire system be considered equivocal as a potential target organ? Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, the problem is I don't know that we can 
summarize those data in a way that makes sense while we sit here. Um, what do you, is, is that, I, 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 I'm, I'm reluctant to call for a vote on something where we don't actually have the data to understand it. Um, but you could make that motion. Um, I, I, I'm uh, a welcome discussion on that point. I think it's an interesting point. It's just uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to, to consider what's included in that classification as we sit here. Dr. Corcoran? I think it's a very good point. Uh, I think it's a little late in the hour to be able to assemble the data, to have a, a clear vote, and strongly recommend that the staff of NTP make this a priority in a future publication. Okay. Um, that's any other questions? I think that uh, uh, I saw a lot of heads nodding. I don't know that we need to vote on that, that motion, but it's a recommendation that's uh, come from the committee. Um, Dr. Melnick, one minute. Just, one minute. I, just, I want to remind the board that they have an opportunity to also make a statement beyond the conclusions if there is something that they felt wasn't captured adequately in the conclusions. And one of those, for example, is the prostate proliferative lesions that were seen with both GSM and CDMA, that the board can point that out as a target organ uh, if they so desire. Well, I think we think we voted on those tumors as... No. Not, not, not the tumors, I'm saying I'm, I'm proliferative sorry, the effects non seen across region. both right, right, uh, okay. modulations as a target organ. Okay. Dr. Harkma? I have one a little thing. I think you um, should go over your categories um, and look, you have in one of them chemical induced. And yeah. I don't think that's, I saw that, right? I don't yes. think that's appropriate for this study. So I would like to, um, to open it for any last comments uh, that anybody has, any, uh, any parting suggestions or advice or or requests to the NTP as they prepare the final report. I think we've had a very wide-ranging and very thorough discussion of the strengths and limitations of the study and the data. Uh, any, any final comments from anyone? Okay, if, if not, uh, yes, Dr. Jones. Um, I would just like to recommend that we follow what Dr. Malice suggested on looking at the nonlinearity um, and following up that that data and method of data interpretation. And perhaps also, um, I really feel like the, the, the endocrine system as a whole needs to ha be focused on and discussed as a whole. Thank you for that. Uh, Dr. Malice. So just adding on, uh, in terms of the data integration, most of the panelists wanted to discuss results for any particular type of, mount, uh, type of rodent in the context of all the other findings. And it might be beyond uh, the scope of preparing this technical report, but as you move forward working with the results of this study, I think that's very important to keep in mind. And I think it's important to keep in mind that the pressure for integration of data is only going to increase as more people become familiar with data and what it can do. Thank you for that. With that, um, let me, as chair, take a moment. Dr. Adler? Yes. So just Will the panel receive a copy of the revised report? Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we will, I can tell you what will happen basically at this point. We take all of your information that, you, that we've collected over the last couple of days and try to, to digest it put it into the, incorporate it into the document. Um, it goes forward to Dr. Birnbaum as a recommendation to accept the panel's conclusions or we, we will actually re evaluate each of these recommendations and, and decide whether to accept or reject. Um, the, uh, the director has the, um, uh, uh, the wherewithal to accept or reject the advice of, a, of an advisory panel. Um, it's very rare that the advice of a, an advisory panel is rejected. I will tell you that. So um, once that is hap has gone forward and uh, she has accepted the recommendations for the changes to the report, 
and the uh, conclusions, then it will be made public. And you will all, all have an opportunity to see the document at that point. But you will also get a chance to look at the, uh, at the go ahead, Mary, you'll, this is your part. <laughs> Yeah, and as I mentioned, um, there will be a, a, a peer review report, and it will be shared with each of you, um, so you can be sure that we correctly c captured your comments on the on the, the document. And yes, we will notify you when the final document is is published, so that um, you can have access to it. But yeah. And given the uh, given the the volume of putting this meeting together, it may be a little while before we get that to you. Um, but Thank you. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank you all. This is uh, not only a very important study, but a very complicated and challenging one for all of the reasons that we've spent the last three days talking about. I really appreciate the wide-ranging uh, and open discussion we've had, the opportunity for everybody to, to have their say and voice uh, uh, their opinions about uh, the interpretations of the data uh, I appreciate the collegiality and the respect that everybody has shown for everybody else in this room. Uh, and with that,